Alright, what's going on YouTube? So first off, I apologize. It's going to be a terrible introduction. This is probably the first YouTube video I've done in probably years where I actually did an introduction. Alright, so right now we got the boat hooked up. We're headed to the river. We're going to try to go catch some fish. You'll probably be able to tell by the caption of this video what this is about. I got a new boat. You know, I got it back in May. It's now October, so I've had it for a little, little while now. Uh, so we're going to be going through the boat, show you guys what it is. Maybe you're in the market to buy one. Uh, the boat's a Ranger RT-178. It's actually one of the most cheapest bass boats that Ranger makes. So it's going to be a little popular because you know, everybody doesn't have $80,000 to spend on a 21-foot glass boat with a 250. Right? I sure don't have that money. Right? So I'm sure there's many people like me that don't want to pay all that money. And they make some quality aluminum boats. So basically, I'm just going to go through a quick walk through the boat, how I have it set up, uh, some dislikes, likes, you know, things that I wish they would have gone differently. But, you know, we'll, we'll get into all that later. So, quick walk through, walk around, we'll give you some videos of it running, you know, how she does, why I went with the motor that I went, why I went with the electronics that I went, you know, just how I have it set up. And then uh, maybe we'll even catch some fish. Maybe, maybe not. I'm pretty bad at this whole fishing thing. You'd think I'd get better, but I really don't. So, where we're heading right now, we're headed down to the uh, North Landing River. It's actually part of the Intercoastal Waterway. Mainly what we're fishing, we're fishing uh, submerged, uh, submerged trees, cypress, cypress knees, and then uh, grass lines. So we just had some rain coming through. It was just raining all this morning. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see if that top water is any good. I got them on, got on really good last night because it's cold. They're up at that top water. I was getting really good on the whopper ploppers and the uh, the spinner baits, not spinner baits, buzz baits. All right. So we're gonna do really good. We're gonna see if we can do that again. So y'all stick around. We gotta make a quick gas stop, quick food stop, you know, because I'm hungry. I'm always hungry. And we're gonna see what happens. So stay tuned. Check your face. Sorry about that. Anyway. Yeah, we're going to the river right now. We're in Pungo Ferry in uh, southeastern Virginia. It's south, as far south and as far east as you can go. So there's the river. You know, there's the south. That right down there is uh, North Carolina. That's how far south we are. And then that's the north end of the river. We're going to head that way later in the night because that's where most of the grass line is for the top water bite. We're going to go hit some deep, uh, deep flooded timber back down that way. And uh, we'll just see what happens. There's a boat ramp right down there. Hopefully it's not too crowded because now I'm watching this thing solo. And I'm not the best backup driver. y'all boats in the water thankfully didn't sink the truck that's always a win <sighs> that solo boat loading you know always a fun time so here she is here's your first look ranger rt 178 get her untied and we'll start heading out here throw that down there
right, y'all, we're here. We made it. We didn't die. We had about a million dollars worth of yachts pass us up, making about a 10-foot week. So naturally, I let them go first because I really don't want to sink my boat when I'm trying to show you guys it. So anywho, so we'll get right down to it. This will be the walkthrough portion. I uh, got it clean as possible. I don't have any rods out yet, so y'all can see all the storage is laid out and all that. So starting off, this is a Ranger Boats RT-178. It is not the C model. However, I think the C model is supposed to be for crappie. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure you will. I'm pretty sure the C model has a second live well. This one's only got one live well. But however, it does have the three position seats, which I'll show you here in a second. All right, so full disclosure, right? Look at, I will tell you guys everything, how much I paid for it. I'm not sponsored in any way. I wish I was. I really wish I was, but I don't have to pay as much. But no, I'm not sponsored, even though I got stickers everywhere. I just like the way it looks with stickers all over the boat. All right, so I paid, let's see, with boat, motor, trailer, and all the electronics that I added on it, I paid just under 23000 out the door. And I think with a bigger motor, what it's actually supposed to come with is rated for a 75. I think it actually costs like 33, 36, something like that. So I only paid 23 because this one only has a 25 horsepower four stroke EFI Mercury. Now you're probably asking yourself, why did you pick a small motor like that? Well, geniuses. So here's what here's what happens, right? So I'm not from Virginia. Yes, I am Virginia right now. I am active duty military stationed out here, right? Now back home we have a lake that's restricted to 25 horsepower and it is probably one of the best lakes in central Illinois. So that's why I bought this boat. That's why I put the 25 on it that I did. All right. So, and then even with the 25, you know, I was on the way over here, I was still getting 21 and a half. If I got two people in here with a full live well, I'll get 17, 18. So it's not like the fish are still going to be there. Yeah, it might take you a bit longer to get there, but it's whatever. You know, I, I built the boat for a specific purpose, and that's to go on that lake back home because I'm eventually I'm going to be out of the military, and I'm going to have still going to have this boat, so I want to be able to fish, you know, where I'm from and where I'm eventually going to end up. All right. So, and then, uh, ah, well, hell, where's I going with that? I don't know. I'll get lost. I, I'm, I'm sorry. So we'll go ahead and start right into it. We'll go front to back, everything that's on it. So let me get you guys up here. So starting up front here, front casting deck. So we're, we got on here, we have a Minn Kota Fortrex, 80-pound, uh, 24-volt, 45-inch shaft trolling motor. Uh, this is essentially what I would call this. This is kind of like the standard. This is what I expect every trolling motor to be. I've uh, My family, we've got a 18-foot glass boat, and this is also what it had on. It had this Fortrex. And I love this troll motor. You know, you see the pros nowadays with the Ultrex. I don't need that many features. I just like the normal foot control, you know, what everybody's used to using. You know, it's simple to use, simple to figure it out. I love this troll motor. I have absolutely no issues with it. Um, so, and they are rigged up for hummingbirds. They have that US2. So the US2 is compatible with hummingbirds. If you want to save yourself a little bit of money, get the model that doesn't have the US2, because obviously I have the Rances. So you can save yourself a little bit of money there if you're putting a boat together and you plan on using the Rances. So there is no space, there is no like dedicated panel to mount on the ramps, right? So I just have mine. This is a Elite 9 Ti2. Uh, I do have the 3-in-1 transducer on it, so it does have the traditional sonar down scan and side scan. So I have an, uh, the same fish finder also on the back. So it does not have a panel to mount anything, so I just had to put mine on a ram mount. Up forward here, you do have your uh, trim switch up and down, and then your nav lights, nav and anchor, right? So that's convenient, you know, you can get to it. You got uh, tool holders up here, you know, keep your pliers, scissors, whatever you want. Cup holder up here, you know, naturally I'll end up with a couple crankbaits or plastic worms in there by the end of the day, end of a tournament, you know, things like that. Get this guy going so you can see what that looks like eventually. Loading charts, hurry up. All right. Uh-oh. Oh, they're trying to network. Yeah, these have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in them, so they will actually like sync front to rear, so you can see what your at what your depth is underneath the boat up here, vice what the trolling motor is saying, right? Because the trolling motor sticks down a few more feet. All right, so here's a so the front deck, right? All carpet. There's no padding. You know, it is the padding is kind of nice with the more expensive boats, but you know what? It's you know I didn't pay for that. Right. So here's the front deck. I got it only came with the one rod strap right here. So I did go ahead and install a second one because normally I got about seven to eight rods on the front deck at one time. Here's those three uh, seat positions I was telling you about. You know, one, two, three. It came with two uh, pedestal seats with it. I just don't have them in here because you know, save weight. You know, faster I go. But you can put one there and then one there side by side. Oh, I have a uh, a spider rigging 
set up for crappie. Though. You can see those four rods hanging off the boat? That's what this plate is for, if you guys were wondering. So you can sit right there, you know, watch your poles and have a great time. So right here, we'll start with these compartments. Get that GoPro piece out of the way. So we have this first box. Now I'm going to get into my first gripe with this boat right here. So here's what we got. So you got this carpet. You see, you see the, the compartment right here, how big it is. And then you open this up, and you're like, what the hell? You know, like, why do I have this giant lid for a compartment and then this little box? You know, I'm, I'm not going to question Ranger. I love their boats. You know, it's probably for a good reason, I hope, because it's kind of annoying. But you get all this when you have all this space. Now, I know they inject a whole bunch of foam. Maybe it's for that injected foam. Maybe they wanted plenty of room for it. Maybe, I don't know. If somebody knows, please inform me because it'll be news to me. So that's where I just keep uh, my line, my anchor, right? I like to keep my anchor up front so I don't have too much weight in the back. You know, I find that it goes a bit faster if I put the anchor up front. Uh, I got my crappie checker for crappie fishing and all that good stuff. Just anchors, lines, stuff like that is what I keep in here. All right, now we got the main compartment right here. Now, one thing you will notice, another gripe about this boat, because I'm used to the expensive boats, there is no gas struts on any of these. Any of these at all does not have gas struts. So I kind of redneck rigged something, right? So I take this, I, you can either fold it flat like that, or if I want to hold it open, I just slide this piece of PVC in here, and then it folds down and sits just like that. So there's my redneck gas strut. Now in here, you know, it's this, this one's pretty deep. You know, I don't have a whole lot of tackle. Right, not near as much as you know all the pros do. They got like five lures, like of every each and every different color, right? So I got my spinner baits in here. I got all of my Guggen plastics. You guys are probably thinking I'm obsessed with Guggen, but I tell you what, they they catch fish. That's why I buy them. Right, they catch a lot of fish. So I got pretty much every color of everything in here for the Guggen plastics. Uh, my spinner baits, I already said, and then my bigger plastics like my Yamamoto's and uh, the bigger Guggens, buzz baits. I can top water pretty much i mean you can see right here so this is blackwater creek this is one of the better top water spots and that's pretty much, i've i grew up let's see i can see my face here not, not that you want to see my face but anyway so i grew up fishing central illinois right there's no it's all lakes it's all deep lakes with rock rock shorelines you know maybe some a little bit of wood not a whole lot so i fished a lot of crank baits you know deep diving baits things like that i never grew up fishing top water and then I came and I moved out here, moved, uh, moved my Uncle Sam, you know, to come out here. And I had to completely relearn how to fish, I feel like. I, I, I never really used soft plastics too much, you know, fishing my lakes. And I never, ever, ever used top water. So I had to completely relearn how to fish. It was, it was quite the struggle. But, you know, I eventually started figuring it out. Started, you know, don't have a, still not a good fisherman by any means. So you can fit a decent amount in here. You know, I got a deep box. You can see there's, uh, there's five... There's five Plano boxes right there, and it's, you know, pretty much up to the lip, you know, so just kind of got a little bit of everything in here for every situation as much as I can, right, and then I still got plenty of room for even more boxes in there, but I just, you know, uh, that'll come with getting more more lures and everything. Let me uh, secure my redneck rig here, because it's kind of a two-handed operation. We'll work on that. I think I'm going to probably, probably install gas struts, because that, that just annoys the, annoys the hell out of me. All right, now, rod storage. We have one rod locker on the uh, left side of the boat. What it has here, it has tubes for seven rods. Now, obviously, you can stick more in there, right? But even with seven rods, you know, it, it, it's pretty full in there. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's pretty full. So, you know, if I put rod sleeves on them, you know, I'd probably stick a few more in there. But right now, I, ha I own seven rods, so... You know, I really don't need more. I actually need to get rid of some of these. I busted a lot of the eyelets on them, and they just, you know, they're going on 10 years old. So, you know, it's kind of like, might as well start getting some new rods. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll make up more videos on what kind of setups I got and what, uh, what my favorite setups are. So we'll close that up. And then we have here what uh, people nowadays are starting to call like a day box. Right, so my day box really isn't a day box. It's more just like for your odds and ends stuff, right? So I got all my extra line in here, you know, some hook grabbers in here. I got the manuals, a whistle, a first aid kit, some GoPro kits, my scale, uh, my JBL, right? I have bought this because there is no speaker in here, and I like to listen to music when I'm, like, making a long haul down the river or something. You know, I usually throw my keys in here, hat, gloves, neck gaiters, bug spray, sunscreen. 
always carry sunscreen with you i don't care if it's overcast you know sunny doesn't matter fire extinguisher chargers for the jbl and my uh and my iphone right so just keep you know just be prepared i throw i pretty much throw everything in here a little bit of everything all right so we'll shove that all in there of course no gas trap just like i said super annoying we got three across seating right so you got so here's one thing i love about ranger boats I love their seats. Their seats are absolutely awesome. Even in these cheaper aluminum boats, I love these seats. And they're super, and they're pretty thin too. I mean, you can see there's not a whole lot to them, but they're comfortable. You know, even hitting big waves, going over, you know, other boats' wakes and things like that, you know, it's, they're pretty nice. You know, you got the flip up right here. You can sit a third guy, or you got this down so that way you don't have people stepping on your seats going to the aft deck, right? Uh, we got a little bit of room over here. I kind of rigged up another rod holder right here just to you know keep my net ready just in case always keep a net with you every time i don't have the net i catch a big fish and then i lose them also because i just suck but anyway so you got uh, storage underneath the seats too this is where i keep you know extra life jackets uh, i got my paddles i got my my fenders my lights now down here this is a uh, a removable mat so it's kind of like designed to keep your paddle and everything in there because they're ready for this they built this compartment to get wet Right, there's no carpet in there on the inside so it doesn't get like moldy and mildew stuff like that and then on the opposite side here same thing i got my throw cushion and then a couple a couple extra things here extra rope and all that and then down here is where i usually stuff my my drinks for the day all right at the console right here driver's console so we got to, it's a pretty good console it's actually fiberglass you know so it's kind of like the expensive boats it's got the it's got the fiberglass console um you got your uh speedometer your fuel gauge and your rpm now with the 25 horsepower it does not have a trim gauge so you kind of just have to kind of basically got to use your your speedometer to see how good your trim is if it's if you got a trim too high or too low you just kind of got to see how it affects your speed right so you got a you know all plastic you know kind of soft touch steering wheel you know it's not the most comfortable thing in the world but you know it's whatever uh right here we got our horn you know we got our bilge pump it does have a manual bilge pump and an automatic bilge pump and let me tell you the automatic bilge pump i really think should be in every boat because you know instantly if you did not put your plug in your boat because you will get a 10 foot stream of water come shooting out your boat and you instantly know what it is you can you know take it out of the water do whatever put it back in your bilge pumps will take care of it right it does have one extra switch for uh, accessories i think i'm going to try to get those rope lights you know to go along go along the, the probably green to match the boat uh interior lights it says interior lights even though there's only one and it's right there underneath the console so uh, i, I, I kind of wish they would have put extra interior lights maybe like one or two more maybe like one in each compartment that would, that would be kind of nice you know it's whatever but you know i don't work at ranger uh your nav lights and then your aerator uh it does have auto and manual i think the auto is like every five minutes it will cycle uh they are also pump out live wells so i'll show you how to do that here in a second and then of course you got the key right everything uh you got your fuse panel right here a couple fuses it does come with extra fuses as well you got a uh, outlet right here to charge your phone that's why i bring that charger and then this right here is your live well control. So people ask, like, I get asked by people all the time, like, what do I need to switch it to so it doesn't fill up? Because when my live well fills up and I don't want to, you know, that's an extra two miles an hour that I lost. So recirc shuts it off. They, there, no water will come in through your drain and fill up your live well when it's on recirc. Uh, when it's on empty, it's open, and auto, it'll, it's also open. So if you want to keep water from coming to your live well, recirc. All right? So here's our throttle here, just standard mercury throttle. Got our kill switch, trim switch, pull it reverse neutral, all that good stuff. You guys have all seen that 50 million times, right? Here's our Lowrance again, uh, which also, looking at this Lowrance, it kind of gives me, kind of goes back into one of my pet peeves, right? So if I'm sitting here, I'm trying to put you guys like right at my face, you know, and I'm sitting right here, I can't even see my down scan right now, you know, which is... You know something with you know how the boat was rigged you know they probably could have moved it up a little bit higher or i have looked at like the bass boat technologies mounts but i really don't want to spend four hundred dollars on a mount for a fish finder you know there's just there's things i will spend four hundred dollars on and a mount for a fish finder is not one of them i'm sorry like I, you can't justify me to me how i'm gonna why i'm gonna spend that much money on a mount you know i'll probably i'll think of something i'll fabricate something i'll figure it out you know but i kind of gotta lean up to be able to see my full fish finder 
So that, that, that's kind of annoying to me. I don't know. That's just one of those things. You know, nit, I'm nitpicking, but it's whatever. All right, let's move on to the back. Well, I got to... I got one cup holder here for me. They do fit the, you know, the good size drinks, you know, the big Gatorades, the big body armors. Mm -hmm. uh, another one over here for your passenger. Uh, here's our live well. It is one big live well, but it is uh, separated with, you know, the divider. You can just pull it right out. Here's your spray nozzle, like I was saying. So uh, it is pump out. So all you do is you take it to manual, take it to auto, whatever you want to do. And if you pull this spray head, it will then divert it from spraying out here to spraying out the side here it'll come out the side back there right and there's your drain once it gets higher high enough to hit that it'll end up spilling over so that way you don't overfill your live well um, I've had five four plus pound fish in here at one time and they're just fine I've never lost a fish with this then again I've only had it for about three months I never lost a fish in this live well you know it's I'm fairly confident that I never will um, and that's another thing while I'm thinking about it Right, so there is only two storages on here. I'm sorry, three storages on here that lock. And some of them don't even have a latch. Like some of them you don't even have to turn. Right, I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. So then we got the uh, pedestal for the aft seat right here. And here's one of those compartments I'm telling you. So if I take this thing straight up and I pull it straight up, it comes open. There's no, there's no latch. There's no nothing. So back here I keep you know my tournament bag, extra oil always a good idea to keep extra oil on you and then i have a tool bag in this tool bag right i've got a spare trolling motor prop some basic tools a basic little socket set screwdriver screwdrivers of both kind uh, an oil funnel to put oil in if i ever need to you know it's always a good idea you can never be you know too too prepared on the water you know don't want to get stranded somewhere because you don't have a, a screwdriver you know I'd, I'd be pretty mad put that all back in there and then on the other side, same size, same compartment, same thing. You don't have to, you just lift up on it. You know, it's, you know, whatever, I'll get over it. In here, I keep, you know, I got an extra hoodie if it's cold. You know, I got my life jackets. I got the auto inflates, uh, a couple more GoPro, GoPro accessories, and then my rain suit is what I keep in here. So that way I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there driving the boat. If I need something, it's just right there behind me where I can quickly get to it. So I'll shove all that back down in there. I've never actually used one of these life jackets i didn't even like test them or anything or so hopefully they work i don't know well, hopefully i'll never have to find out all right now which brings me to the big compartment right this is where you know you do all your work so this one actually does lock this one does lock so that way you know your somebody doesn't walk off of your batteries all right so here we are so here's your fuel tank it's mounted all the way in the back um, i really wish this was mounted more forward i feel like it would be more weight you know have better weight distribution i don't know you know it's what it, one of those things but th that's your fuel tank i got three interstate batteries right here one cranking two deep cycle because it's a 24 volt trim motor and then you have a uh, three bank battery charger right there and then they rig your cord up all nice to where you don't have to go fishing for it in the dark it's just attached right there to your lid so that is nice and convenient again gas struts please ranger if you're somebody watching this just please put gas struts it's one of the you know it's not i don't feel like it's that hard i don't think it's that much you know if i if i would have had to pay two to three hundred extra dollars for all these to have gas struts i would not even think twice about it you know it's just it's one of those little pet peeves i got so and then here's here's our motor it's a mercury 25 four stroke efi um like i said it's I told you guys why I have it. It's that horsepower restricted lake back home. Still pushes me 21 and a half. You know, it's as good as... It's still got power trim. It's still got the emergency pull start. You know, I kind of like that feature. Your uh, your fuel filler is right here in the back. Right there. And then if you look down there in the water there, there's my 3-in-1 uh, transducer right there. And, yeah, that's uh, that's basically, you know, the boat. That's... It's not there's not really a whole lot to it it's a really simple boat if it's somebody's first boat you know it's really not a bad option you know if I, it isn't it isn't my first boat but it is the first boat that i actually bought you know on my own with my own money so you know it's not not too bad of an option you know if it'd be perfect it'd be, it'd be the perfect boat right now if i had the 75 on it that it's you know rated for i feel like i would enjoy it a lot more because i know here that i can go faster but i you know it's whatever that's that's a completely different topic so 
So that's what we got. I know you guys are probably tired of listening to me ramble and everything for the past 20 minutes of this boat, but so that's the boat. If you guys have any questions about it, you know, put a you know drop something in the comments. I'm on YouTube all the time. You know, I'll answer questions. Um, so right now, I think we're gonna start heading south a little bit more. Give you guys some more videos of it running on the water, and uh, we'll see if we can't catch any fish. Thank you.